Jane and Bill were just two unsuspecting college students back in the early 60s. They would eventually fall in love while studying at Occidental College in Los Angeles, California. Jane was a sophomore working towards a biology degree, while Bill was a freshman getting acquainted with college life. They didn't know of each other's existence until one day. Bill caught a glimpse of Jane at the campus cafeteria. From that moment, he couldn't look away. Little did he know, but they were about to embark on the romance of a lifetime. Bill was enamored by Jane, but he didn't know that she was very different from him. Bill and Jane's first encounter happened in that same cafeteria. It was a chance meeting in 1962. Jane was at the cafeteria working her shift when Bill dropped in to grab a bite to eat. Neither knew that the other would be there. But the moment that they locked eyes, something clicked. That something would turn out to be love at first sight. Unfortunately, both Jane and Bill were shy at the time so they didn't even say a word to each other. They couldn't even look at each other without blushing. Before we get into their romance, let's backtrack a bit. Prior to enrolling at Occidental College, Jane was a humble girl born and raised in Reno, Nevada. At an early age, Jane's father taught her that she must work hard in order to be successful in life. Since Jane deeply respected her father, that was an important lesson that she carried with her into her adulthood though her parents never pushed her to go to college. They supported her when she made the decision. For her, being successful meant obtaining a college degree. Jane didn't know much about Bill until he did something that got him in the local paper. Bill came from the other side of the tracks. Bill was brought up in a family that was well off. So suffice it to say that he was set on a certain path in life. When he first got to Occidental College, Bill joined the Kappa Sigma fraternity as part of his plans for a bright future. Bill's well-to-do parents had very high expectations for their son. He was enrolled as a law student and quickly became the president of his fraternity. It seemed his future was all laid out, that is, until he laid eyes on Jane. But before Jane entered the picture, Bill was already making a name for himself at Occidental College. When black student Jean Grigsby wanted to join Kappa Sigma, the National Fraternity Union refused Grigsby's pledge on the sole basis of his skin color. Seeing the injustice of this, Bill, as president, took the frat out of the National Fraternity Union and made it an independent chapter so that Grigsby could join. Bill's freshman year was already monumental in that he became president. But now he was making waves at his school. Academically, things were going well for Bill. But it took a while before he knew how to handle love. Meanwhile, Jane was hard at work. Coming from a humble background, her father provided some financial support for her college tuition but it wasn't enough to help pay for all of it. Jane took an on-campus job and started working shifts at the cafeteria. It was a job that required Jane to come to school quite early in the morning. By this time, Jane and Bill had seen each other. When he realized how early she would go into work, Bill started waking up extra early in order to be the first one in line at the cafeteria. Eventually, Jane and Bill would get over their shyness. Soon, their demure glances had evolved into small talk, and even that eventually progressed into full-blown conversations. Bill, who remembers the encounters as love at first sight, would wake up early every day to see Jane. I believe we were simply meant to be. I even remember the first time I laid eyes on Janice. Bill would later reminisce to the press. Their morning encounters became a routine and on days where Bill didn't show up, Jane would start to grow concerned. 
Bill made seeing Jane a part of his routine. But surprisingly, they both were unaware of a certain vital piece of information about each other. Bill's crush became so intense that Head routinely head to the campus cafeteria every day. At 6. 0 a.m. Because I just wanted to see her and have our little early morning exchange. He would later recall. Little did he know in those days that Jane looked forward to those encounters as well. Every morning as she got ready for her cafeteria shift, she would secretly hope that Bill would be in her line. Her favorite station to work at was the cereal bar. Because she was sure to run into Bill there. Though Bill was a freshman, he was settling into college life with ease. As a law student and fraternity president, he was already doing much more than the average college freshman. He even avoided the freshman 15 by going on morning runs. What gave him the motivation for these early runs was the hope of seeing Jane later that morning. It was usually after his runs that he'd go to the cafeteria to have breakfast and, of course, see his crush. Surprisingly, this had gone on for weeks, but neither of them even knew each other's names. It would take a while for them to learn each other's names. But once they did, things would take an extreme turn. As a freshman, Bill was already somewhat of the big man around campus. But that didn't mean he was entirely confident he could score the girl. In fact, he didn't think he stood a chance with Jane. I actually didn't think I had a chance with her. She was a year ahead of me and just so beautiful. He would later recall. Little did this freshman know that his crush was feeling the same way. Their daily morning encounters were making Jane fall for Bill just the same. Even if the meetings were just for a few minutes. Thanksgiving is often students' first break from classes out of the school year. Occidental College hosts a pre-Thanksgiving dinner for all its students as a way for them to get to know each other better before they leave for the break. Jane was one student who was quite excited for this campus event. She was particularly looking forward to this dinner so that she could get to know Bill. She arrived at the campus cafeteria for her shift during the dinner only that time. Something was amiss. Bill never showed up. Jane was so struck by Bill's absence that she needed to find out where he was or if something had happened to him. Luckily, she ran into one of his friends, who told her that he had left campus early to go home and be with his family. This is when she went to great lengths just to see her crush. Determined, she found out where Bill lived. With his address in hand, she wondered what she should do with it. Should she try to go see him? Or should she just wait and see him after break was over? It. For Jane. The answer was clear. She had fallen for Bill. Which is why in the end she decided to go see him. Bill lived 160 miles away from campus in Santa Maria. California. Jane got into her car and drove there on a whim. For her. The distance was no issue and the three hours it took her to get to Bill's house breezed by. But by the time she arrived in Santa Maria and rolled up to the Bill's residence, the weight of what she had just done set in. Jane froze at Bill's doorstep. She realized she was completely nuts for driving all that way to see someone she only had passing conversations with in the cafeteria. She hadn't even called him to let him know she was coming. You'd think having that much doubt would just prompt her to walk away at that point. But Jane wasn't going to have driven all that way for nothing. She decided to just knock on the door and see what happened. When it opened, her heart nearly stopped at who she had seen. When Jane knocked on the door of the Bill's residence, none other than Prentice himself answered the door. Jane's heart skipped a beat and Wilson was shocked. Ultimately, however, 
He was pleased that she came all that way to see him. In fact, he says that he was thinking about her when she happened to knock on his door. What would have been an awkward encounter turned out to be a delight as Bill's parents even invited Jane to join them for Thanksgiving dinner. Everything was working out for the crushes. But it wouldn't last long. Thankfully, Bill's parents were just as taken with Jane as he was. Bill's mother in particular felt an instant connection with the young woman. Which was a huge relief to both of them. Jane's bold move had worked in her favor. After thanking the Bills for a lovely dinner, Jane knew not to overstay her welcome and drove the three hours back to campus. A few days later, Bill would return too. But neither of them knew that Thanksgiving night had been a turning point in their blossoming romance. Soon, things were about to change. When Jane and Bill returned to campus following Thanksgiving, everything changed. Their crushes had developed into a full-blown relationship. Those weeks of chatting in the cafeteria for a few minutes had immediately blossomed into a courtship. The new couple was inseparable and spent all of their free time together. Nothing could come between them. Everyone on campus knew they were together. Whenever people saw Jane and Bill together on campus, the couple was always smiling at each other. The lovebirds felt as if they were meant to be together, which led them to do something crazy. Jane and Bill were so in love that one day. Bill decided to follow his heart, take the leap, and propose to Jane. The moment Bill got down on one knee, Jane knew she would say yes. It's crazy what you would do when you're young and in love. After all, they had only known each other for a few short months before deciding to get married. Much of that short period of time was spent merely staring at each other and it had taken weeks before they started talking to each other and even learned each other's names. Getting engaged was the easy part. But suddenly, someone would enter the picture and tear it all apart. Bill and Jane's engagement was so exciting that it was even announced in the local paper. They couldn't have been happier to be engaged. Despite the fact that they only knew each other for a few months before taking the plunge. The more time they spent together, the more they got to know each other. And the more they learned about each other, the more they fell in love. It seemed that nothing could stand in the way of their young love, that is, until the following January when Jane's father found out and felt the need to get involved. Jane's father was obviously upset over this news. But her mother would offer a sliver of hope. Jane was completely flabbergasted by her father's reaction to her engagement. She couldn't afford to go to college on her own. But she had finally found true love. For a while, Jane didn't know what she should do. Even more awkward. The engagement was already announced in the local paper. So everyone knew. Calling it off would be a social embarrassment. Jane looked at the announcement again and studied the last words. No date has been set for the wedding. It seemed like a warning at the time. But it was also a sign. Jane and Bill were heartbroken by her father's imposition. For Jane. Her education was incredibly important to her, especially since her father had taught her to work hard to be successful. It wasn't like she was just going to give that up. At the same time. However. She knew she was madly in love with Bill. Anyone who experienced that feeling knows that that isn't just something you can give up. It changes you for the rest of your life. This made the decision even harder. But suddenly, Jane's mother intervened with a solution. Jane's mom would try to help. But Bill's mom had a crazy suggestion. Jane's mother decided to take out a second mortgage on the family home in order to help supplement her daughter's college expenses. 
This was all done with the hope that her daughter could follow her heart and be with Bill. Sadly, Jane's mother's efforts were fruitless and it wasn't enough. She was again faced with the decision to follow her dreams or follow her heart. Jane at least had enough sense in her to know that the wise decision was to follow her dreams. As much as it hurt, she called off the engagement and broke up with Bill. Bill's inability to empathize with Jane was the final nail in the coffin. Jane decided to complete her degree and leave Bill behind. But she would never forget him. After breaking up, Jane and Bill's lives drifted further apart. After getting her biology degree, Jane went on to run the family business. The Jane family operated a diving board company. Their success was hallmarked by Jane's induction into the USA Diving Association Hall of Fame in Seattle. For Bill's part, after leaving Occidental College, he moved on to Harvard Law School. Becoming a tax attorney, he moved back to the West Coast and settled in the Bay Area. They both had accomplished their career goals. Little did they know. But fate would bring them back together. Following the breakup, Jane and Bill would still run into each other on campus. But they acted as friends. Their whirlwind engagement was buried deep in the past. After leaving Occidental College, their lives grew even further apart. Once they accomplished their career goals, they even went on to marry other people. 47 years later, both of them were divorced yet their paths had never crossed since college. But one day after tragedy struck in both of their lives, they'd make shocking discoveries that would cause their worlds to intertwine once again. Both Jane's and Bill's mothers died within a few short months of each other. They both had to sort through their mother's belongings and found something that caused all the memories to come back. Jane and Bill discovered that each of their mothers had kept the couple's engagement announcement from all those years ago. Jane's mother kept it laminated in her purse. Jane and Bill hadn't even thought of each other much since they moved on. But this discovery brought it all back. The mothers got it. The mothers simply knew. And I think we also knew. They'd recall. Being reminded of that special time in their lives, Bill decided to reach out to Jane. She agreed to meet him in San Francisco. At a restaurant called Cliff House. They reunited. From the moment she saw Bill for the first time in 47 years, Jane knew that there was still something there. Bill felt the spark too and they pretty much just picked up from where they'd left off. They began dating again for six months before getting engaged for a second time. This time, there was a date set for the wedding. Jane and Bill wasted no time this go-around and got married. Their relationship had come full circle. As they decided to get married at the Occidental College campus surrounded by family, friends, and their former classmates.